All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out and those that are attending virtually. So tonight I'm gonna to go through the 21-22 school district budget. Um, this sums up the process that we started in January in our finance committee meetings uh, a couple times a month and our board meetings to go through the whole budget. Board adopted the budget uh, last meeting and now we're gonna have the budget hearing tonight. And remember next Tuesday, the 18th is the vote. So I'll discuss that more as we go through. So proposed budget, a little over $33 million. Uh, that's an increase of 2.14%. Uh, remember in, that, in our budget, we have the bus purchases, a small $100,000 capital project, and then salaries, contract obligations, health insurance premiums. Um, I'll discuss that more as we go. New York State aid, 7.877 million. That includes the building aid. I'm gonna discuss more of that on the revenue slide. One thing I will talk about now is the, uh, we did receive federal money a uh, little over $2 million. Um, and that money is really like one-time money. The good thing is that we're putting that as like a grant in the federal fund, it's not in our budget. Because once you use that money, it's gone, that's pretty a tremendous hole in the budget. So I'm gonna be working with Lisa, uh, a couple other people in the administrative team to see, uh, really to address learning loss and really enhancements for our, our kids uh, after going through COVID. So that money's gonna be used for that. Um, and, and as I see, that's uh, set aside from this budget. Tax cap levy, 1.81%. So that's what we're allowed to go through uh, for a, without a super majority. And we need 50% in one vote to pass. Um, but we're going out with a 1.76%. So we, we discuss this with the board and finance every year. This is the 10th one with the tax cap. The last nine years, we've averaged 1.76%. And our goal is to you know balance the school needs uh, with the taxpayers' needs. So when we can, we try to come in slightly under as we're doing this year. And out of the 10 years that we've had a tax cap, we've come in under six times. Next slide. Three part budget, uh, all school districts have to show this. <clears throat> and if you look at every school district, it's pretty much the same across the state with these percentages, plus or minus a percent here or there. As you can see in the red, the 73% is our program that makes sense. Really, all the teaching, extracurricular, transportations included that, all the salaries, benefits, really everything for the kids. So, as it should be, that's where the majority of the money goes. Administrative is 13%. Um, that's building admin, central office, board of education. And then the other piece is the capital, and we have our public library in that piece, that's 14. Operations, maintenance, and debt service you know, for our, our capital project. Some of the highlights that we've discussed on the previous meetings. We were fortunate um, that we we're looking up, we put in the budget and the instructional line to hire additional people, personnel service position. So we're really looking at a school psychologist or social worker. We're leaning towards the school psychologist, really to address the mental, uh, emotional needs of the students, even before COVID. Um, we discussed this as a team. This is a very important position to add to the district. But with COVID, we, you know, with, with all the students have gone through, this will definitely be a benefit as we move forward. We also have a $100,000 capital project. We put this in place five years ago with the board. I brought this up about putting a, you know, handling small needs, $100,000 project, which we get aided at 50%. So 50,000 comes back the next year. So the first year you put it in, the next year you get 50,000 and we do it on a rolling basis. So 
What we've done is we've updated our swipe card systems with day automation. Those have been the last, every building in the last four years. And our blue lights and really address some of the, those issues. But that system was so outdated we couldn't even get parts. The other piece for the buildings and grounds, Andy Davey, is we're looking to upgrade the burglar alarm system that's through international, it's a separate system. The systems don't speak to each other, so we want to integrate these systems. We also have to upgrade the panels and, and all the motion detectors in all the buildings. So that's going to be our next project, and that'll enhance our security for the school. Budget highlights, so this is the revenues. If you look at the bottom line, we're going up 693,000. That's where you get to, the, as I discussed, the 33 million, 50,383. First line state aid, uh, as we, you know, as all districts have experienced, we did get a, a more state aid this year than we anticipated. You know, originally we were looking at a $100,000 deficit. Right here, we're looking at a $76,000 increase, just about 1%. Uh, but what really that's made up of state aid is five million of that roughly five million is our operating aid to run our operations that's the one i focus on usually that's been held flat so that's been very difficult this year we got a couple hundred thousand dollars extra in that line then the other lines are the reimbursable expenses you spend one year to get the next which you got BOCES, transportation um, special ed and building aid we did drop down on building aid. Uh, we had an emergency project two years ago that we received an increase this year. It was one-time money. That's why we had a decrease there. Otherwise, that's been held low. But as I stated, this is much better than we were talking about in January. With, it, with it, it's an increase. Other revenue up 214,000. Other revenue is interest income. It's our pilot payment of taxes behind the uh, old price chopper on the hill, the senior home. We also have tuition students in this line, miscellaneous revenues, some health insurance rebates, penalties on taxes. And the, the big increase here, though, is we're doing a Wi-Fi project, um, updating the Wi-Fi in all the buildings, increasing the speed and access points throughout the building, adding a lot more access points. And that project is, uh, is again, we receive uh, FCC created a universal service fund where they bill uh, telecommunication carriers. And then there's a piece that goes back to school districts and we qualify every so often for money for that. So we're doing a $275,000 Wi-Fi project, which we get 70% back. So in this line, 192,500, that's a revenue that we're getting back for that project next year. We get it the same year that we do the project. There's a corresponding increase in expense of 192,500 in the budget in the instructional one that I'll talk about in the next slide. Medicaid, is flat. Uh, the Medicaid is for the occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech for our Medicaid eligible IEP students, and that's been trending in that amount. And then the, the, the really the bigger piece of the property taxes, which I discussed, 1.76, which is below the cap of 1.81. Appropriated fund balance we carry over every year since I've been here. That's our contingent money that our goal is to have to be to carry over to help reduce the tax burden. So total revenue going up 693,528. Expense side, if you look at the bottom line, same thing uh, that matches the revenues 33.050 million, 2.14%. General support is the first line on the top, uh, going up 2.31% or 88,000. That's the uh, district office, business office, board of ed, uh, BOCES administrative expenses, it's our legal, it's our operation and maintenance. And what we talked about is we went through the budget. We've been keeping almost all the lines, just in contractual increases through salary and trying to keep everything else light as possible. Uh, we did add one item in here and it's not significant cost. Um, one of the benefits we had this year is when we were filming the games in the high school uh, gym, we heard a lot of feedback that a lot of parents, grandparents from across the country, I even have you know, my, uh, my in-laws in Brazil mentioned that they're watching my son play. So we're gonna put a camera in the gym instead of me holding the the iPad, <laughs> a little shaky, but we're going to put a camera that has the score on. We, we've looked at uh, examples and you know, it really is nice for other people to see that as we move forward. So that's one of the pieces that actually hit this code. Instructional piece, you'll see the 182,000 increase, so 1.19. That includes the 192,000. So in reality, we had five retirements for teachers. That line was actually negative, uh, but we had an increase for the Wi-Fi project, but there's a corresponding revenue to offset that increase. That's pre k to 12 salaries, all the extracurricular, the sports, guidance, psychologists. That's where we added the psychology position. Pretty much everything for the kids. Transportation, we've been able to keep that flat, which is, I was happy to see. We consolidated some of the private school runs out of district. 
because uh, we did have obviously a uh, seven cell increases, so we were able to keep that flight with a uh, uh, combination of some runs. This is the uh, driver's mechanics, supervisor office, fuel supplies uh, to run our, our fleet. Employee benefits, that actually went up 4.25%. The first year I, since I've been here, actually, the, uh, the health insurance was a slight decrease, pretty much flat. Um, this includes ERS and TRS, so teacher retirement, employee retirement system rates, they did go up slightly. Our social security's in there. But what we really did is we addressed, we had a retiree health, uh, we paid for retiree health insurance. And when I came here, the gap was about 300,000, 280,000. And over time, for living longer, costs are going up. That gap became 600,000 this year. We do have an accrual that we've been using to offset that, so we're paying that down. But I discussed with the Finance Committee and the board that we don't want to have this huge gap when the money runs out. So we took the operating money, the extra operating money this year, and we applied it to the retiree health and uh, insurance to close that gap. So instead of 600, 650,000, we're about to 280,000. So my goal is to close that over the next few years, uh, matching that with the employees. That service, principal and interest on our bonds, that's flat. We, we worked on creating a flat level a few years ago, so we didn't have changes in our tax cap, trying to keep a bubble. Interfund transfers, last line, that's the cafeteria. That's the public library that we fund. Um, that's summer school special ed, 20%. And that's our $100,000 capital project in our bus purchase. A slight increase in those numbers. So net result, as I said, a little over $33 million, 2.14. Tax cap levy, 1.81. And we're recommending going a little below that, 1.76%. So Board of Education, we have an election will take place to fill two seats, a three-year term and a one-year term. This is part of the plan we discussed that was voter approved last year to go from nine to seven seats for the next few years. Candidates for the seats, Christopher Spencer, Beth Over, and Denise Berry. Propositions, as I said, 33, uh, 33 million for uh, Proposition 1. And then there's also a, a proposition for a student representative. Board has seen tremendous use to have a non voting student to sit on the board and to get really that first hand perspective of the students are feeling and bringing the issues to the board. Where and when at the MED Elementary School, so we're back in person uh, voting Tuesday, May 18th. That's next Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then budget information we have on our set, uh, we have a budget information page. There's an icon for the budget. With all the information I discussed, uh, channelcentralschools.com. The newsletter went out, and any questions you can be emailed to budget at channel.k12.ny.us. And that's what I had. Are there any questions? Do board members have any questions on budget code? Yeah. Mike, you want to just ask if anybody online? Anyone in the online in the public would have any question? What's that? Yeah, that was um, to make uh, okay. 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 All right. Just, All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Matt? Matt has a comment? I just like to say for, for uh, those of you watching that may not have sat through the uh, budget presentation of the last uh, couple of months, that uh, it's really uh, quite something that we've managed uh, COVID um, uh, with very little impact to operations from, from a financial perspective, thanks to um, crazy budget management practices uh, in the last few years. And, uh, I feel really good about this uh, upcoming cycle. We're able to keep numbers uh, as low as we could. Um, I know all, all districts are not as lucky as ours. Well, thank you, Matt. Um, I, I think that uh, Mike's proven year after year. I mean, our district is strong. We're in good shape. And thank you. And thank you. Thanks, Dan. Yep. So, so uh, Close the uh, budget here. Uh, 
I asked for is they, they just wanted us to make Gladys a, a presenter. That's it. Do we have a second? Favor? Now we're moving to our regular meeting. Uh, motion to approve the present agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. We opened up to public comment one more time. Uh, if any of the public have any comments, you can raise your hand at the uh, bottom of your screen and we'll try to do our best to watch out for you. Uh, we are being recorded and please take your name clearly. Okay. Okay. Oh, somebody just put your name. Nope. Sandy Fisher will be coming on the screen. Well, hello, Sandy. Hopefully she didn't raise her hand by accident. <laughs> well, it could happen up there in Boston. There we go. Okay. Hey, Sandy. How are you? We, hey there. We have no internet. Our wires are down. So I'm trying to do this through my cellular. Um, but I just wanted to give a shout out to the science department, since I'm the, the 612 science department leader. Um, and I just feel that the Board of Education should just hear a shout out for the hard work that the that all the teachers, but particularly the science department has done throughout this year with the pandemic, um, dealing with hybrid and remote and trying to do hands-on activities and labs. It's been a really tough year for us, um, particularly science, partic particularly at, at the uh, high school and with the eighth grade where we're running lab periods, so we have double periods. And I just think you ought to know, you know, just we're just really working hard and uh, I really appreciate them. And I just want that to be in the public comment. Thank you, Sandy. And we do always appreciate your staff Greater set of challenge and uh, hopefully we're through this thing. Uh, thank you very much for all you guys do. Board comment. Board doing it's great to see you guys in person. Well, with masks, but in person. But uh, anything new out there? Yeah. I, I, I just told you that we need teachers need to get some updates on phase one. Okay. 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 I can, that's easy. We have no phase ones in terms of academics for next year. The only add to the budget is um, our school psychologist role for next year. Any other questions for Tamara? Yeah, I, I, I'd just like to um, shout out to everyone that made possible um, I think doing the recruiting um, and presentation, putting together that uh, public health pod over at Fairgrounds for our high school students. Um, I know uh, our adults have uh, been. Um, fighting with COVID anxiety, uh, but some of our children, and I, I know some of them are you know, doing much better now. And uh, look forward to uh, that moving down uh, CDC uh, star of the line down at the middle school. I'll, I'll be making some comments during the um, superintendent's report in terms of that clinic and then also the. Uh, Clinic that we plan coming up soon for the 12 to 15 year old group as well. That that shout out has to really go to uh, the Public County Department of Health, Jack Mab, our public health director, who um, uh, we decided that um, the public fairgrounds would be a good centrally located um, venue for not only our district but some surrounding districts and the community. So I'll have more comments a little bit in a little while. 
Thank you. I want to say it made, it made the uh, head of news today, but uh, once again, the uh, uh, girls volleyball had a uh, remarkable season. Getting a banner, I believe if I was accurate, uh, somebody's over 21 years since then. So, uh, if uh, everything's awful uh, in 2021, there will be a banner that said that one thing was great, and that was our girls' volleyball. So, that's kind of cool, and uh, congratulations to them. So it's it's my pleasure to I introduce uh, Gladys, Dr. Gladys Cruz from uh, Questar 3. She's our district superintendent who has a pretty comprehensive presentation to bring you up to date on some of the exciting programs that they'll be offering uh, this year and in the near future. So Gladys, uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Um... And uh, I want to thank the board for giving us the opportunity tonight to share what we're doing and some of the new programming that we have um, for the next uh, next school year. So um, let me just start with, uh, so we have two new programs that we're going to be launching at the, um, they'll be housed at the Hudson Valley Community College. It's a P-TECH and an early college high school. We received two grants and the goal is to really to increase graduation rates and to increase completion rates at the college level. So the early college high school program um, gives the students an opportunity to meet the region's um, diploma requirements while also earning uh, between 24 to 60 college credits. And the PTEC is uh, uh, up to a six year program that also allows students to gain an, an associate's degree from uh, Hudson Valley Community College. So the students would enter um, in September, uh, ninth graders, uh, the state has allowed us also to accept 10th graders due to the pandemic. So um, those students are also allowed. And it, as I said, early college high school is a four-year program. PTEC is up to six years. And the goal is really that they get, um, they complete their high school um, requirements, but also gain significant numbers, uh, number of college credits and or an associate's degree. There are multiple pathways. We have computer information systems, cybersecurity, civil engineering, welding, fabrication, environmental protection, and health sciences. Our partners, of course, are Hudson Valley Community College, and the Tech Valley Center of Gravity and Artificial Intelligence Center of Excellence. Um, we hope that we will increase our partners with other businesses because the goal is once students um, gain their associate's degree that they're the first in line for the workforce in those areas as well. So companies are going to be ensuring that they offer these students that graduate with these uh, pathways um, the opportunity to enter the workforce. So we've been um, in our planning phase. We will begin implementation in September. The implementation of early college high school goes through August, 2025. Um, PTEC through uh, August 2027, up to six years. And we are right now, we are still um, recruiting students. We have begun to do some targeted recruitments. We are hoping to um, do another recruitment information center uh, information session next Thursday. Um, uh, we have, we're, our hope is that we have representation from the majority of our, of our school districts in the region. 
and some additional new programs. And I'm going to turn it over to Anthony Tavy, who will uh, take you through some of these new programs. Can Anthony? All right. All right, so starting out with our, our new visions program. So we, um, in addition to our CT programs, we also operate uh, new visions programs, which are uh, one year programs for seniors and they're half day programs. So we have a total of five that are reflected on this screen, new vision STEM, new visions medical, pathways in education, scientific research and world health and visual and performing arts. So I just want to highlight a couple things that are new. Our New Visions Medical Program uh, now also embeds uh, seven credits for EMT uh, through Hudson Valley Community College. So students will take the state EMT exam at the end. Um, our Pathways in Education Program is now located on the campus of the University of Albany, right in the Albany School of Education. Um, our Pathways in Education Program is also an approved CTE program where students will also complete the requirements to receive a technical endorsement. Um, and they could also satisfy the requirements of the four plus one pathway. Students also sit for the teacher assistant examination at the, at the culmination of their program. Um, Chatham has a total of uh, two students enrolled in our new visions programs for next year. Um, Gladys, if you just click, there's a, there's a star that talks about, there you go. Um, and uh, we also work to uh, provide transportation for our New Visions program. So um, you have, Chatham has a student in our New Visions medical program, which is located at Samaritan Hospital, and one student in our visual and performing arts program, which is located at the Arts Center in downtown Troy. Um, we always work to assist districts in Columbia and Greene counties to get their students to our programs. Uh, next year, we'll be providing a, a shuttle bus, uh, which will make specific stops for students, students from Chatham. We'll actually go to Ichabod Crane, um, which is one of our, our partners in providing those shuttle uh, transportation runs. And that shuttle will then take them to all the different New Visions locations within uh, at the University of Albany, um, in downtown Troy, on, on the SUNY, SUNY East campus and so forth. So in addition to the five new vision programs that we identified um, on the previous slide, we are also working to, uh, to develop a new program. And the new program is what we affectionately call New Visions EPIC, that it stands for Emergency Preparedness, Informatics, Cyber and Homeland Security. And this is really an emerging field. Um, the study of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity and Emergency Preparedness is a, a, a rapidly expanding field within the capital region and nationally. Um, the program will be located right in the brand new uh, University of Albany um, building that is specific to their College of Emergency Preparedness and Homeland Security. Uh, we're quite excited about that. Students will earn, in addition, uh, they'll have opportunity for 15 college credits. And we are still accepting students for this program in the fall of 2021. So hopefully we can, uh, we still need a few more students to, to launch this program. And it's just a phenomenal opportunity at the University of Albany. So uh, we hope that we can, uh, we can continue to gain a few more applications for the program. Next is our uh, youth apprenticeship program. So this year, Quest R3 BOCES is excited to have launched our youth apprenticeship program. Uh, Questar is only the second BOCES within the state to offer such a program. And the, the four programs that are identified within the first year are construction technology, uh, welding, heavy equipment operations and maintenance, and HVAC. And part of the program is to, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about it in a little bit, but um, is to really try to connect students on a more advanced level uh, within their pathway, their preferred 
trade field and provide them opportunities to pursue internships and paid, paid internships with our industry partners and really puts them on an advanced track for careers um, in these fields. So in addition to receiving uh, programming and support within their pathway that we identified earlier, students are also earning nine college credits um, in applied mathematics, English, which is the technical communication course, and then blueprint reading for technology. So the two courses that they're taking this year as juniors are math and construction, uh, construction 103, which is the blueprint reading course. And then next year, they'll be taking English 110, which is the technical communications course. All students within our, um, within our CT programs have integrated credit opportunities. In their junior year, they receive math and science credit. And in their senior year, they receive integrated English credit. And in the youth apprenticeship program, the students are doing it to the next level, um, almost like an AP type offering where they're receiving college credit as part of that program. So with the youth apprenticeship program, it's always been our mission as an organization to prepare students for uh, both college and careers. And through the development of the youth, youth apprenticeship program uh, and expanding our work-based learning opportunities, we're accomplishing exactly that. So in addition to the classroom hours that students receive over two years within the program, they're also earning nine, nine college credits, doing 200 hours within their field of study and the end result is a preparation preparation that is helping them in both the college and career realm. Finally, I wanted to talk about the Farm at Durham. This is a, uh, a new program that is currently under development. Uh, we are in the developmental stages. One of the requirements that New York State has is we need to submit for program approval now the year before we implement a program. So we are working to design um, an agricultural plant and animal science program in addition to the culinary arts program at the Durham building. So it really would take it through a complete farm to table experience. So uh, the preparation of the land, the planting and uh, animal science part of, uh, part of that into the culinary arts. We do understand that, um, that transportation is a challenge uh, for some districts when we, when we talk about programs in our various locations. And, and thankfully we've been successful um, in really working to connect students with existing transportation opportunities, as well as looking at expansion through uh, our transport, or our contract transportation, um, so that we can make sure that, that it's not a limiting factor based upon location. We really wanna make sure that all students have opportunities to explore their passion and, and the pro their programs of choice. Thank you, Anthony. And so I do want to speak a little bit about COVID-19, which has really taken um, a lot of our time over the past 15 months. Um, we have faced many challenges. Uh, COVID-19 has had impacts on students, families, instruction, and fin finances and budget. Um, we are, we feel very um, proud of the work that we've done in the region. Uh, we have been able since uh, March uh, 14, um, um, 2019, um, 20, we have been meeting every week with our health departments. So we have a weekly meeting with each of our health departments and we have established some amazing relationships with them. Um, we have <clears throat> been able to, to really um, plan jointly and for the closures, we did that for the closures, we did that for the reopening. We were able to uh, 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 submit a, re, a request to get a limited service laboratory and we were approved the limited service laboratory. We've been supporting the districts with, um, with testing for ath athletic programs. And then we've been um, supporting our districts and identifying with the, the 
um, departments of health really identifying those locations with vaccinations and sharing that information almost on a daily basis. Um, we've also uh, supported our districts in the acquisition of supplies and PPE and supporting um, the departments, different departments of, um, and operations. These are some of the health uh, uh, and safety services that are purchased by um, Chatham. And now I'm going to quickly ask um, Harry to talk about some other programs that Chatham um, purchases. Can we get Harry in? Give me a second, I'll get Harry in too. While Harry's connecting, um, I just wanted to um, shout out the um, health and safety services offering from Questar, in particular Craig Hansen leading that team has been by no stretch of the imagination, indispensable. I'll say that again, indispensable. Um, the, not only the weekly meetings with the county health department, but Craig has made himself available um, seven days a week um, to help assist us with um, some research on the latest guidance and as you know, and you've had heard me report here before, that changes, uh, at one point it was changing on uh, somewhat an hourly, daily, or a daily basis. And I could always count on Craig to um, reach out to him and say, what is the latest on this? And, um, you know, that was kind of a sleepy service for a long time, but boy, has that come to the forefront under COVID as being indispensable. So my shout out to Gladys, the team, but in particular, Craig Hansen, who I'm not sure how we are, made it this far without um, his, his, his assistance. Thank you so much for that, Sal. Um, I, we all agree. He's, um, he's been um, amazing this entire 15 past, past 15 months. So Harry's on. So Harry, you want to talk about quickly about some of the other programs that the district is purchasing? I also want to thank Sal for being a big supporter of the health and safety program because uh, unless everyone supports those programs, those programs go away and, you know, when we need them, they're not going to be there. So thank you, Sal. Uh, this is a sample of some of the services that uh, Chatham is purchasing. Obviously, we have oh, close to 300 different services. Uh, that's just a sprinkle of uh, what services you are you, you are purchasing obviously career and technical education and special education, those are major components. The next slide uh, shows uh, some of the other services that are, are available and obviously PTEC, Early College High School, that's a new program that Gladys has talked uh, earlier about. Uh, just some, uh, some data points. Uh, in the, during the last fiscal year, uh, fiscal year uh, 2000, uh, 1920, uh, you purchase approximately $1.9 million worth of uh, Questa 3 services. About 300,000 of it was special education related services. Uh, the rest of them were bosses aidable services and you receive back approximately 42 cents on the dollar. Your bosses aid ratio is 52%. However, as you know, uh, you know, there are certain things that you are not being aided. Anything that becomes property of the of the school mm -hmm. district or salaries in excess of thirty thousand dollars. So that brings down your actual bosses aid ratio down to forty two percent. So that's uh, that's what happened in the last uh, year. Now the 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 next slide. Uh, I know we've been talking about the wrestler. Uh, modernization project for about a decade now. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad to report uh, that we are on phase three, the final phase. Uh, hopefully by the end of this summer, uh, we're going to wrap up that project. Uh, if you recall, phase one uh, was the actual uh, um, side work. You know, we had... Uh, created a new bus loop, uh, improved the parking, improved, improved, the, improved the side work and uh, the utilities that go into the building and uh, improved the drainage system that, uh, that uh, we had at that site. Uh, phase two, uh, it was dealing with the interior of the building. And 
basically what we're doing there, we're doing half of the building. Uh, we did half of the building last summer and we're gonna do the other half uh, uh, this, uh, this summer. And the work that we're doing with the interior of the building is replacing the HVAC systems, the boilers, uh, putting some new uh, equipment in our programs like freezers and dust collectors. Also, insulating the roofs, changing windows and doors, uh, replacing the metal siding outside the building, and um, replacing flooring, ceilings, bathroom, reconfiguring bathrooms and some classrooms, uh, replacing the fire and burglar alarms, and uh, and also upgrading the electrical systems uh, within the within the building, so we can add additional programs. Uh, in the in the in the future, if uh, if that's needed, uh, what you see here is a picture of uh, the work that we they, we've done two summer ago two summers ago on phase one. And we have a little video to show you the work that we did last summer. Uh, really, it was a gut rehab of the of the whole uh, of of half of the building. So the next slide has the video embedded in it. Did the thing froze? sharing your screen so uh, yeah um, I don't have we're sharing their screen so is it on Anthony's computer or so that didn't work okay, okay well uh we will we'll uh we'll forward the video to to Sal and maybe he can share it with the board. It's uh, basically okay. shows the Let me see. I, I can hear the music. There was new, nice music that was going with this video, but uh, you know, I can tell you basically what you are seeing is the, the extent of the work that we've done in the interior and, and exterior of the building. We, we basically gutted the whole uh, building and uh, you know, they were, we had to really redo the culinary area. What you're seeing there is the uh, cosmetology area. Uh, we have created uh, three, a number of special ed classrooms. Uh, can we, we configure them. And uh, we also reconfigure the office space. And we also created like a mini cafe or cafeteria so the students can enjoy the, the, the food that our culinary students are, are, are preparing and uh, and they have them up there for sale. So uh, basically these students can have um, the whole experience from preparing the food to selling it to, to students and staff at the at the Center. Yeah, so the This is the culinary, uh, this is the special ed education classrooms uh, for the special ed wing. This is, that was a science uh, lab. So a lot of work, 
uh, and I'm glad that we are wrapping things up uh, uh, this summer. Uh, I also want to thank the board for their support uh, with our administrative budget. Uh, it was a, a, a unanimous vote. Everyone voted yes. So thank you again. Again, that budget was frozen to the prior year levels. You know, those minor changes that you see is because of changes in Rwanda. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was another unanimous uh, yes vote for our administrative budget. And uh, we thank you for that. That's okay. all that I have. Thank you. Thank you. So the, um, there were a couple of questions. I don't know if uh, we have answered. So what considerations are being discussed regarding offering opportunities for full remote for these new programs in the future? So um, we are currently having uh, conversations within the academic subcommittee on you know, possible virtual programs. These new programs, I think we need to get them started and see how next year goes um, and then see if we can integrate a remote option. That would be something that we would have to um, look at down the road. In terms of um, uh, creating transportation solutions uh, that uh, was addressed by Anthony. We are working with um, districts to broker um, some possible uh, coordination of, of, of transportation. So are there any other questions? Um, yeah, I look forward to having a, a conversation, with, uh, an update in terms of um, perhaps some of the creative transportation things you're taking a look at. Um, we haven't we visited that since Danielle was in charge of CTE and there were some logistical challenges. So perhaps you and I can connect and just revisit um, some of the possible scenarios of our students attending the um, Durham program and uh, perhaps even the Rensselaer program and some of the SUNY programs moving forward. I know that's of concern to the board. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention, Gladys, was um, you know Anthony and uh, Terry worked really hard on the summer school offerings for which we are extraordinarily um, pleased. Um, I, I thought they did a wonderful job coming up with some different options. And um, I'll be reporting to the board in the upcoming weeks more about what's going on this summer. But we, we currently plan on uh, having eight teachers at um, the elementary level, uh, K-6, um, um, participate in a coaster that was set up where uh, the short story is that um, they're gonna be able to uh, participate in some professional development prior to the summer school program. And then they're gonna be uh, working on a weekly basis in a, in a professional learning uh, group uh, with other teachers from the Questar region. And then because of that collaboration and that closer, um, we're gonna be eligible for BOCES reimbursement on the summer school um, salaries that we pay those teachers. So um, that, was a, that was a kudos to you guys to come up with that as a solution to help us move forward. And Sal, if I may, on the transportation issue, I just want to give you uh, give the board and yourself a, a long-term historic kind of pro perspective. 20 years ago, uh, Cuesta Three Bosses had a transportation department, a shared tra transportation department for out-of-district uh, tra transportation. So the districts would, uh, would basically take uh, special ed students and uh, students that they were going to Albany to private schools, et cetera, through the Cuesta free buses. And, uh, you know, 20 years ago, unfortunately, we started losing support for it and uh, we dismantled the whole program. Uh, then 10 years went by and then uh, districts started thinking about, well, maybe we shouldn't have dismantled this. So uh, we did a study with, uh, we, we got a grant from the, actually our components got a grant from the Department of State, and we spent about $300,000 doing a, a study that uh, had two, two, two conclusions. One, uh, share extra buses. You know, just have one district, uh, keep a few extra buses and you can all share. And then and the second one was really establishing this share out of district uh, routes. And that's how we got involved also in creating some options for the districts. 
but that is a major major area of concern absolutely any questions um from board members i've got a question for anthony maybe i missed it but uh wondering the uh farm at durham uh, what's that proposal is that a two-year deal or one year yeah, so it would be a two-year program similar to our other CTE program, so the students would attend in their junior and senior year. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for that? I think I just like to express a comment. Um, I, you know, I'm really excited about uh, DHS and CTEC program development, but we are so far out. I think um, with maximum transportation creativity, it's a real stretch for us to take advantage like that. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, more distance learning opportunities um, talk along the uh, lines of the collective moving programs. Um, something perhaps less uh, uh, smaller in scale than a you know, four or six year program. There's a lot of opportunities to get our high school students. Now, I had a hard time hearing all of that, but I, one thing I would share is um, I'm very familiar with, with the challenges um, of being a, a remote district. Prior to joining Questar, I was superintendent of schools at, at Cairo Durham, which is, which is on the other end of, of BOCES and in a similar remote, uh, remote status. So, you know, we are really committed to working with all of our component districts to make sure that geographical location does not become a barrier for access to our programs. So, you know, I, we will, we will work to make sure that that does, that does not become a barrier. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for folks? I, I also just want to acknowledge um, one of our board members, Destiny, who was a, a graduate of the um, New Visions, but it was the political science. Yeah, it was a long Long government program. So uh, you're just a product of uh, our collective efforts, not only in Chatham, but in Questar. And here she sits as a Union College student, as one of our students, or I'm sorry, not, not you weren't a, that's sorry, as a, a full fledged elected board member here in Chatham. So, it, you know, just wanted to make sure we, we pointed that out, not to embarrass you. No, it's okay. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. It's great to hear those stories. So um, thank you again. We will continue to work with our districts to try to solve that transportation um, dilemma and um, continue to look ahead in terms of uh, what programming we can really make accessible through a virtual um, uh, uh, environment. So Thank you again, and uh, thank you for your questions, and thank you for the time tonight. We'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye. See you Thursday. Bye. All right. So, uh, okay. So, first and foremost, um, a huge, huge shout-out to um, all of our teachers and uh teaching assistance. Last week was Teacher Appreciation Week uh, nationally. Uh, we're, we're having Chatham's little twist on that this week. We have some uh, exciting things that have been planned. Um, tomorrow we have an exciting uh, raffle uh, with almost 52 items. Um, the administrators and, and other folks have put together some very creative baskets um, that, will be, um, that will be raffled off uh, to, to all of our staff for showing the appreciation. Um, I know it's Teacher Appreciation Week, but as superintendent, I'm extremely um, appreciative and want to show gratitude to, to all of our employees who over the last uh, 15 months have been uh, miraculous. Um, Mr. Chuddy has a very unique basket in the raffle, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. You know. um, also, um, just for the, for the record, um, uh, Mike did operate the uh, camera during uh, basketball season. And he'll go down in Chatham history as the most expensive videographer that got fired um, from that task. But um, we are very glad that in the budget we're going to have a um, a high-end uh, video camera so our our folks, um, our parents, and our community members can enjoy um, uh, our student athletes. And again, Craig mentioned this earlier. Shout out 
um, to our, our girls volleyball team. What an amazing uh, um, accomplishment that is. Uh, we're really excited to raise another banner in, in that gymnasium. Uh, as was also mentioned, uh, the budget newsletter uh, was mailed out last Friday, started to hit homes in the community on Saturday. Um, we're very um, pleased this year we went back to a six page um, version so that we could provide as much information to the community as possible so they can make an informed decision on uh, May 18th, again here at MED from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then the long awaited, highly anticipated superintendent budget video should hit the streets uh, in the next couple days. Uh, God help the community, they want to see my mug on TV, but um, we, we have had good um, luck over the last few years putting together a video and communicating the same information that's in the uh, newsletter and that will be out shortly. Um, as you know, we've had some administrative, um, temporary administrative changes at the high school. Uh, currently our um, assistant principal, um, Justin is acting principal and um, our assistant principal from MED, Mr. Brett Fortran is assisting him at the high school, but I should um, you know, let the board know that the entire administrative team is supporting this effort um, as um, our uh, high school principal, Mr. Thorson, is on medical leave and we hope that he has a speedy return to the district. Um, end of the year schedule, we've been working on that this week. I know um, the, the uh, teachers who were on the call and, and, and the parents at the high school, uh, we want to be, be able to communicate uh, the end of the school year activities, uh, the schedule in particular, and we're working on that. Some events that are coming up that are really considered high profile. We continue to work on the plan for graduation. Uh, the committee who is um, uh, working on that uh, will we'll be um, providing some more information in the, in the coming days and coming weeks. We will be holding that at the fairgrounds. Uh, we're hoping to kick that up a notch from last year and improve upon the overwhelming um, success that we had given the circumstances at the fairgrounds. On June 18th, we have um, the moving up ceremony, middle school moving up ceremony uh, for eighth graders that is going to hopefully weather permitting, we'll be on the football field here at the high school where we're going to attempt to have that in person. Uh, each, uh, each eighth grader moving up will be allowed to have two in-person uh, guests and we're just keeping our fingers crossed for good weather. We do have a plan B. Plan B um, is not as exciting, which would include an indoor event that would be streamed to households. And then also that evening, uh, we had the senior trip. The seniors are taking a trip on the Dutch Apple Cruise Lines that evening to celebrate uh, their accomplishments. And, uh, and I, this is out of order, but on June 10th, uh, we're having an Arbor Day celebration and uh, PS21 is graciously allowing us to use that facility so we can have a physically distanced, safe celebration this year. The administrative team is, is hard at work with beginning conversations over our opening plan for next year. Uh, we are uh, anticipating that guidance is um, going to change yet again as everything that is beginning to look very favorable uh, in terms of the um, positivity and transmission rates with COVID. And so in the, again, in the coming weeks, we'll be uh, at this point forward, we'll probably be updating the board as to where we are uh, for our opening um, this coming September. We, I briefly mentioned the summer school offerings. Um, we will be offering programs uh, in, in all three buildings. The most significant program will be um, at MED. That's where I mentioned that we're collaborating with the Questar um, BOCES, um, a program that allows our teachers to learn about weekly thematic, um, uh, weekly themes and collaborate with um, teachers from other districts to offer our students a very robust uh, summer school uh, experience. The, um, as Matt mentioned earlier, we uh, were um, pleased that we had um, roughly, um, I think around 20 uh, students get vaccinated last week at the um, fairgrounds. They used the fair house. Uh, we had originally uh, thought that we'd have that on campus, but uh, it, it just was much more convenient to have it um, centrally located within the community as not to be disruptive to our operations here. And by all uh, reports, that was um, very well received. I believe they ended up uh, um, administering about 150 of the Pfizer vaccines uh, during that event. Eventually, it, it was open to the public and walk-ins um, that, that evening. The um, conversations last week took place in terms of um, Pfizer seeking um, emergency 
use authorization for their vaccine on 12 to 15 year olds. As most of you probably know from the news yesterday, they have now received that authorization. We went ahead and sent out a survey to our parents last week. That survey closed yesterday. And I'm pleased to report that we have 112 students um, represented by about 90 families who um, have indicated interest in getting that vaccine. I will find out more information about the time and place of that during our weekly meeting that um, Gladys had referred to with the Department of Health that takes place on Wednesdays tomorrow. Um, Jack Mab was just waiting to get the survey results, results from all the schools so he could plan uh, for his back, weekly vaccine order. So I, I have, um, I'm somewhat certain that that's going to take place in relatively short order, probably in the next few weeks. And I think that's my report for tonight. Any questions for Tom? Yes. Do you recall uh, the approximate number of uh, the approximate interest number we had in the high school class? Uh, yeah, so the 32 um, responses to the survey indicated interest and 20 uh, followed through with the commission slip. And uh, what I don't have, and I can find out from Jack tomorrow, is if any of the group above the 20 showed up as a walk-in. That, that information I don't have. That's, that's a big difference in interest from uh, yeah. between those demo demographics. And, and you know, it, it should. It could also be scheduling conflicts too, right? We at one point, um, uh, one of the athletic teams reached out to me. There were three individuals who were interested in getting the vaccine, but it was in conflict with one of their games. And I'm, I'm pleased to report that our athletic director um, prioritized the vaccine over the um, contest, and they rescheduled it so those three um, athletes could participate. So, um, but I, I would also imagine that it was on one evening for a two-hour window, and that could play a little bit into um, you know the difference between interest and accessibility. So I, I know we're waiting on uh, more approvals from the CDC and organization um, at the county level and availability. Um, presumably though that would also be available as a cohort two for high school population. Oh yes, um, I should make that's a great point Matt. Uh, what Jack had informed us is when we go to the 12 to 15 um, clinic, anyone 12 or older um can can participate so we can pick up and catch anyone who has developed either wasn't wasn't able to be vaccinated or has developed interest in being vaccinated absolutely and i i would imagine it, it's reasonable to uh, surmise that um based on the availability he would then also open it up to a walk-in or additional um you know uh, community members if that if that's um, a possibility well, they don't, there's a lot of strategy in not wanting to waste the Pfizer vaccines. So typically, I believe there's 400 back, 450 vaccines in a tray. And um, with, um, I just past um, clinic worked with Green County to split a tray so that they could really ensure whatever they have or been um, allocated that they're making sure they get used up. So, Chris? Doesn't sound like it's on. I can hear you, but Dad may not be able to pick it up. There you go. In terms of uh, you know, the, these clinics, um, is there an opportunity for? The district to you know throughout you know, the summer. Yeah, I, I wouldn't see any reason not that we won't be able to. Jack has been extremely collaborative, um, and, and it doesn't appear right now that the vaccines um, are in any um, short supply. So as long as there's interest and coordination, um, you know, I think we want to make every effort to get as many. Um, students and community members vaccinated as possible. I think it's one of our clearest paths back to some sense of normalcy and comfort. So absolutely. My, my wife told me today that Walgreens got a sign up to walk in today. They got all, all you want. The only difficulty there is sometimes what vaccine they get, right? So 
for our populations 12 to 15 and 16 and 17, the only authorization is the Pfizer vaccine. So you would just have to inquire as to with the pharmacy or whoever is offering it what particular vaccine they had on that particular occasion. That's me. Um, couple questions. Um, if it, it's a combination, right? So we're we're sensitive, and I wish um, our our principals were here to fill you in a little bit more. But it's a collaboration with parents. So we obviously have students that we think and have identified um, as being those that would um, really well or would really benefit from a summer program. And so those conversations take place at the building level. Um, between administration and, and parents. and But ultimately, there are some parents who feel their students um, uh, are need a break. And so at the end of the day, it's up to the parent whether you know whether they participate or not. And that, the same is true, and I think Brian's on the call, same with our, our extended school year program for special education students. Um, you know, we have a committee meeting where we identify whether they're eligible for summer school based on certain criteria. And once they're identified, we still have a conversation with our parents to say, is this something you would like to take advantage of? And often they do, but on occasion, they they feel that their, their child has had, uh, you know, a particularly tough year, they, they may opt that, that they don't participate. So I'd like to think it's about a collaboration between the two. Okay. And then um, out of the 112 students, uh, 12 to 15, what is the entire state number? How many, what is the percentage that they practice? Well, so if, if you rough, if you do rough numbers that you have roughly 80 per class, right? And so of 240, roughly 240 students that would be in that age group, roughly 112. So approximately just less than half. Okay, thank you. And then in the other cohort, the 16, 17, I think there were, you know, again, um, roughly 170 students that, that were represented in that group. Any other questions? Yeah, I just have a question about the, you know, we talked about uh, some senior Uh, Chris, I'm going to have to forward uh, I'll have to put something together for the board um, in, in the coming days, and, and, and we can certainly have um, uh, Justin uh, approach the board on the 25th. I will tell you that um, we had began those discussions this week. Um, I'm trying to think of what just occurred on Friday. Um, Entrance? No. Um, that information is being collated now. Um, you know, it changes a little bit on, the, on a daily basis based on work being uh, caught up, but we're we're kind of assembling it now. Was it incomplete? Incomplete. That's right. Incompletes were due um, just before Mr. Thorson went out. Um, we we provided a little flexibility to the high school students. Um, and let me see if I can get this right. If we gave an extra couple weeks. If you had gotten an incomplete in the third quarter, I think you had a couple extra weeks to make up the work. And that information is now being um, you know, gathered as yeah. to who, who took advantage of that and who didn't. So we'll have a much clearer picture um, by the end of the week what where our, our students are at the high school. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to sidestep that conversation. I just wish I had, had that information for you. I don't have it. But we'll get it. Any other questions? So, we go on to uh, board committee reports. Uh, policy committee. While you're doing that, um, I forgot to mention that the uh, now that you've had the budget hearing, the required budget notice will go out in the mail tomorrow. The postcard. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't recommend it. Um, we have a couple of uh, policies that we are in the process of revising. Uh, the, the one that we see the first is one of the ones that we are buying. Uh, we have a couple of 
the altar lamp in the left. We got a lot of power to do it. Now I just revise my picture up in the side. Thank you, Mom. Up in the morning. They have to do the grass there. We have some grass. Uh, we ask that they have to go through the video for some input on uh, clarification this year that we are going to today. Um, so hopefully we'll have those to you in another uh, other than that, um, we're kind of wrapping up the year. We don't have any more that come down to us before the end of the year. Any questions for Pat? Thank you. We jumped into a facilities committee. Uh, we met um, a large group. We had all SEI design. We went to Sal and Mike, Chris, and we discussed um, a future plans, as Mike was mentioning, the $100,000 projects. Um, we're actually trying to look almost three years out, so at least three projects. One you mentioned was updating the burglar alarm system that's been in the works, but it's scheduled. And then we just touched base on our building's condition survey and uh, just kind of touched base with everybody and we got a uh, good plan moving forward. So, I think that's about it. Unless Chris or Muriel has anything to add, or Mike? Nope, I'm good. Back to Pat. First reading of her policy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making her policy tonight. <laughs> And um, we actually started looking at it from the standpoint of updating it to uh, the recommended um, changes that uh, the education department recommended. Um, way, the, the key changes were revising the uh, section of um, penalty or the kind of referred to the attending school when they're done. Um, because there is a, you know, if there are skills that they need to, they want to maintain, because it depends to get an award or whatever they have to do, you may come to the education department. Also, we have the section on uh, addressing uh, the the office is pretty far near the entire policy. Uh, nothing is really new or changes to it. It's just the way it was put together. Attachments where it can be referred to the type of graphics that are in support of the meeting. Does anybody have a question? Uh, just because it, the, the title on the document still says NISBA sample policy 5100, did this, did we pull the NISBA sampling this year or is that left over from last cycle? It was, oh, I think, yeah. I thought we, we, we caught that. Um, you know, what it is is what you're saying is in the word format. It's embedded in, in, are you seeing it, right? It's in it, yeah. It's in the title of the PDF, it's in the title of the PDF, but that, that's irrelevant. I just wanted to know if, if this is like new, or is this, is the whole policy new, yeah, or yeah, well, the that's the last one? It's actually, you know, well, the new policy, the old policy was based on both the theory format, and actually took the new format, it seems to have been played out, and, um, but we look, make sure that we need to turn it on by line, make sure there is nothing new added that is consistent with the old policy. Okay, 
Okay, so it's it's, it's new new verbiage, but mostly the same policy. Yeah. yeah. We'll fix it. I know we fixed it on the Word document. We must not have fixed it on the PDF, but we. And, uh, and I will talk about. I cleaned all that up off of my copy, so it's interesting. The, the the new section. Well, are you, in, in terms of the the document properties, that's where it appears. Oh, uh, okay. So in the document properties. Yeah, I, the, the the new sections that you pointed out as as being changed, they look good to me. I was just curious. I need to go read the rest of it, I guess. But. certainly send the information out whether it's acknowledged or returned I have to check with our principals on that any other questions for Pat All right. 58 your job with the Board of Education Texas leaves July 1st, 2021, thereby creates the full time position of school psychiatrist. Second. Questions or concerns? All in favor? Aye. Everybody opposed? R59. We resolve the Board of Education effective, effective July 1st, 2021, hereby create a part time 1643 position of teacher assistant at any date. Can I get a motion? Okay. Questions or comments? Uh, can I just ask what would this person would be assigned? Uh, at any date, at the, at the, at the, at the um, elementary school. Right, but you don't know. I mean, why do we need? Yeah, is I, it to cover IEPs or no, um, boards or so as we're looking at plans and I um, as we're looking at plans for next year, um, we decided we're going to need just a little more supervision uh, in terms of um, implementing the guidelines when it comes to um, putting our classes back together, but potentially having to have uh, students eat in a different configuration. So this is likely to be used in places like the cafeteria, um, and also to give at times where we need to give other, um, I believe, to give other staff a break, a required break. So that's that's the intention at this point. But I will follow up to make sure I'm correct on that for you. Questions or comments? One, and this is just one position we're talking about. It's actually a, a yeah, it's a fraction. It's a so point, point six. Right. Point six. Yeah. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. R60B resolved that the Board of Education changed the date of the 2021 reorganizational meeting from Tuesday, July 6, 2021, to Tuesday, July 13, 2021. Is that a motion? 
motion. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Question about that one? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I recall that our appointed board members may not serve between vote and ordinance appointment. Is that correct? That is correct. We have meetings in there? We have a break. We usually have, uh, right? we usually have a break. Between okay. the election and the organization meeting, you have yeah. two June meetings. Two June meetings. Right. Okay, so we're going to be down. Uh, you just have Chris on the one appointment. Oh, second that. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're still good. Yeah. We're still good. Everybody's in favor? Aye. Everybody opposed? Okay. How are you doing over there, Deb? All right. <laughs> Uh, R61 did result the Board of Education approved the agreement with Columbia County Board of Elections for the use of one optical scanner, voting machine, and annual election and vote workers for the current fiscal year. In accordance with the policy and schedule, and authorized the superintendent to sign the agreement. Can I get a motion? Motion. Okay. Questions or comments? Favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. R62. It resolved that the Board of Education accepts the consensus agenda K through M as written. You get a motion? Any questions or comments? I thought it wasn't important. Too young for that, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Items for future agenda. I'm wondering if we could get a parking lot to you at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's uh, been a little bit. Uh, I, I have no idea what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's in our board box, right? It is, but I think there's only a couple we, items. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll dig it up. Yeah, we should. We used to do it. Don't feel. We got a refresher back when it was packed. We used to have a full parking lot, huh? Like, yeah. From my from my recollection, I think there's one in there, kind of an old one in terms of um, green initiatives, and then I also think there's one in there related to IT um, assessments as well. I have an item it's relating to you know the past year. I, I would like to hear from teachers. Well, we know you need you know what was what was. We heard from a science teacher from the high school tonight. And, um, what, you know, it would be a good idea that uh, they want to put something together. Uh, I hear it uh, quite often. Uh, you know, it's stress. It's a different place for everybody. Um, real different in the school. Um, you know, we've got to get to the time. I was supposed to get the uh, robots up for the last and get the robot out. So we're um, going to work on that for next year. But, um, that was a lot of fun for Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that was, you know, uh, difficult. I don't know how, how they're going to explain it to us. 
it's different than uh, you know, building principles have been. You know, we pulled this up a couple meetings ago. Hoping when the uh, weather gets a little nicer, things get a little nicer. Not this whole thing. You know, picnic tables start getting filled up again out there. And, or it's happening like some of us would they, they would like to be able to share with us the, the, the experiences they had you know, so we always come back to some of us would come in for for a couple of days for a couple of hours I have a weekly, or I have a bi monthly meeting with uh, Joe and Ashley. Um, why don't I do this? Why don't I check with them tomorrow and invite them to a future board meeting to come and do a presentation? Yeah. If, if, invite them if they so choose. If you want to have a few teachers from yeah, I think we'll use this teacher from each building or whatever. Let them decide. Yeah, uh, related um, requests, I guess. Um, and I know that um, we're getting that feedback already going to the building leaders, uh, but also Lisa's been really doing a lot of groundwork trying to let what we learn. Um, I'm particularly interested around um, successes and failures and uh, around the digitization of our curriculum, which is very disruptive. Um, and we've got a long road, I think, ahead there, but I'd love to see what the path looks like um, at some point. I, I, we're probably months and months away from being able to boil any of that down, but hopefully not months and months. Hopefully. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna that would raise his hand, right? If uh, he had any comments, if we haven't heard from him, not to see him so. Shout out to Ted. You got anything to let us know? Uh, uh, move on. Uh, second public comment. Uh, I'm going to ask the uh, public to uh, raise their hand. Comment? Ted, right just here. raise his hand. Ted. Yeah, really public. But how you doing, Pat? He's coming up. Everything good? And Sandy is gonna come back too. And you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of delay from when you're an attendee to the number one selling feature. Come on. You're good at that. Uh, if you're calling me, it I just comment that it is very difficult to make out board member comments throughout the meeting. Uh, Sal and the presenters were as clear as usual, but the the board comments were very difficult to make out, and I probably missed eighty percent of them. Good feedback. We'll, uh, Are you asking me another question? There's the difficulty. I, I don't understand. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it's all the board members. I wasn't sure if uh, you were hearing me fine or no. You're probably the best, but you've got that booming voice too that makes it to the microphone through the mask. Uh, the I I I didn't get a comment from anybody else. I couldn't follow. Well, thanks for your input. For what it's worth. Thank you. Really, just wanted to make sure your uh, independence. You know, <laughs> what it came off your uh, your uh, your uh, report. So, thank you. Looking good. We're gonna move on. I think Sandy's hand is back up. I don't think that's from before. I'm hoping it's not from before. So I'm gonna, Sandy. I'm gonna promote you. 
just in case. And if I'm doing that in error, Hello, Sandy. You are on our screen. You are muted right now. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, um, I still. So, Craig, you and whoever spoke after you was really hard to hear as far as as far as the board comments went. Um, but uh, Sal had mentioned, uh, you know, our plan at the high school for third quarter. And I just wanted to elaborate on that a little bit because it, we were all really passionate about um, the program that that John Thorson had put into place before he took his medical leave. And that was uh, for third quarter, if kids were between the 50 and 64 grade mark for third quarter, they received an incomplete and they had two weeks, which expired on last Friday, May 7th, to uh, bring up their grades to potentially a 65 passing grade for third quarter. Uh, and so teachers at the high school worked really hard with those students in that population to try to make that happen. Um, and I don't have the, the statistics on how many kids actually made the mark. Uh, but I know, you know, in my department, um, you know, we worked really hard to try to get those kids, kids up to that. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. And, uh, and just thank you guys for your, for your hard work and, and care for our students and for, for our district. It's really appreciated. Thank you. So you didn't hear anything about robotics and all that and all the money that we were I, putting into it? I heard something about tearing apart a robot and I got a little scared. Um, but I just tried to tune that out. Uh, we did receive a grant um, through uh, the GE Foundation and we're purchasing 3D printers for the robotics program. Um, and those should be uh, in the works in the next couple of weeks. And that'll help the program for next year, anyhow. Um, and we should be back up and running, hopefully next year. Excellent. Thank you. Andy, yep. the, the big endowment check from Simmons Automotive, he said it was, he said it was in the mail if you didn't hear that. Yeah, you know, I know where you live. So, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go to the source that Mrs. Simmons, she's, she's good for that. Bring this order, <laughs> order to this meeting. <laughs> but seriously, thank you for sharing the additional clarity on the uh, grading practice. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I don't see any other hands. Um, uh, um, all favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? And we're going to appoint Sal for district pro count. Get a motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. I do not anticipate conducting any business voting on any items. Okay. We're going to stay in here. I think we can. Yeah. Okay. Try to shut everything down. 